Hello, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to this week's Fusion Friday. So this week's topic is actually kind of a fun one. I'm going to be talking about how to create a geometric tile like you see here. Uh, this is one I 3D printed, so you can kind of see it's got some different peaks and valleys, and these are becoming really popular for like wall backgrounds. Um, there's a couple different ways you can make these, so I'm going to show you two different methods. Uh, so let's jump right in. So there are a couple different methods you could use to create these geometric tiles. Uh, the first one is pretty manual, so I'm going to start by creating a center rectangle. Um, let's just do maybe a 6x4, but then I'd have to come in here and draw some, some lines like so, um, and I'm just kind of creating the different shapes here, and I'm not going to spend too much time on this, um, but hopefully you get the idea of what it would take to create something like this, um, like so, and then maybe just something down like that. So I now have all of these individual profiles, but I can't extrude them all at the same time because they're touching each other. So I'd have to do um, some that don't touch. Well, I, can't, I can only do these two to start out with. So let's go ahead and extrude. And let's just go up maybe like an inch in height. So the trick here is this taper angle in the extrude command. So I can grab this little wheel here and start to drag. And you can see we can change the taper angle. But you'll notice I get an error message. Um, it, it couldn't create this particular profile here. But you can see the other mountain getting created. So again, very manual process. I might have to come back in and edit my sketch and add in a, a line like so. Let's give that a try. Um, and so now I can do those three at the same time. We'll extrude one inch, grab this and start to rotate. And now it allows me to create those mountains. And you can see by adding this taper, we're basically bringing the peak of the mountain down to whatever angle we want. So we could go 60, uh, we could go, um, let's just say 70 in this case. I'll say OK. Then I'd have to turn my sketch back on and pick um, other islands that aren't touching each other and do the exact same thing. One, and then an angle of minus 70 in this case. And then lastly, I'll do these two islands extrude and angle of minus 70. So we end up with uh, a shape that looks kind of like this. Now, if I wanted to do this over and over again, it would take a long time for me to create those sketches. So there's another method um, that it's an add-on into Fusion, and it's this icon right here, this Veroni sketch generator. Uh, and you can see in the thumbnail what it does. It actually creates um, some Veroni sketches for you. To download this, if you go into the Utilities tab under Add-ins, go to the Fusion App Store, and here are a bunch of different applications you can add in to Fusion. Uh, if I scroll down to the very bottom, you'll notice that it's actually one of the most popular apps for Fusion is this Veroni sketch generator. If I click on this, um, it brings you to this page. Make sure you select the operating system uh, that you're using. So if I'm using Windows, I want to click on Windows. If I'm using Mac, I want to click on Mac. And then I can just click on Download. And the next time I restart Fusion, I'll have this new Veroni sketch generator. So let's take a look at how this really speeds up the process. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to set a 6x4 uh, rectangle. And then I'll click on this Veroni sketch generator icon. Now it's asking for a sketch or a profile, so I'll select that. And I can do like a larger size, or I can say use the profile size. And then I just click on this Veroni editor. And it's going to bring up a dialog that looks like this. I'm just going to make it a little bit larger so you can kind of see what's going on here. And it's creating the, this Veroni style. So by grabbing some of these, you know, sliders, I can change the quantity, like the cell count. 
I can change um, how close and far apart they are from each other. And then you can even do what's called re relaxation. So it sits there, it's almost like bubbles in a dish, right? Where they kind of settle or relax next to each other. So it'll just kind of keep solving and solving and solving. So, um, and if you crank that down, it's not going to do any. They're just kind of just in place. They don't relax next to each other. And there's a bunch of different kinds in here. So curved, straight, uh, circular. So, for example, if you wanted a whole bunch of holes punched through, like a vase or something that you designed in Fusion, you could create, you could use this uh, Veroni sketch generator to create those holes for you. So what we're going to use is this straight. And when I click on that, you can kind of see what that looks like. Now, I don't want that many cells. I'm probably going to be down in, you know, the, the teens or something like that. So I'm going to drag down. Um, let's just go maybe to like 19, for example. And here's a little trick. If you hit your up or down arrow, you can change the number instead of trying to drag uh, right to it. So let's just do maybe a 16 in this case. Now you'll notice they look pretty similar in size. Um, so I'm going to drag this relaxation down to like zero, and that makes it much more random. And then this cell scale tells me how close or far apart they are from each other. Well, if I crank it all the way up to 100, we pretty much get the exact same result that we did in our first example, where these lines are touching, and I'd have to extrude them pretty much separately. But if I were to come in here and set that to 99, there is a very small gap between each of these lines, and that's actually going to help us out. So here we go. That looks pretty good. And then I can just say publish to Fusion 360. And you can see it pushes it right into Fusion. Now I, I these overlap. So I'm going to go ahead and edit my sketch. And let's just change my original um, rectangle to construction geometry. That way it's not in the way. And like I mentioned before, if we zoom up, you can kind of see there's a slight gap. So now I can come in and say extrude draw a box around everything. We'll extrude all of these at the exact same time, height of one, and let's change the angle down to like minus 70 like we were doing before. And you can see by changing the height, you get you know different results or whatever, but it's doing all of them at the same time. I'll say okay, and we have something that looks like this, for example. Now, uh, if I expand this open, we can see these are all individual bodies. But I could come in here and create a, a quick sketch. And let's just uh, project maybe these two corner pieces, draw a, a rectangle that kind of connects those two. And we'll extrude um, those that profile. So let's go ahead and say extrude. Maybe we'll do it like uh, 0.125, and we want to join that together. And now you can see this is all one body that I could 3D print like I showed uh, at the beginning. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, all I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up and share or repost the video with others in your network. This will help spread the knowledge of Fusion out to the community. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics, please reach out to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next Fusion Friday.